surgery in freakish timing. Taking the overall as well as the Triple Crown last season, that was something I wanted to repeat. I was looking to try to do the perfect season. I definitely set my goals high. There's a quote that goes, even if you set goals too big to achieve, you will end up way beyond your initial level. It's a lot to take from that. Innsbruck felt pretty good. I'm very familiar with the environment there, with the course, the venue. It didn't really feel like there were that many question marks. So going into it, I felt quite comfortable. So yeah, first day on course. Uh, it's been uh, about seven or eight months since the last competition I participated in. So it's always a bit of a excitement going into the first day of practice, uh, just to feel how the off season paid off and to see what other people have been working on and just overall to be back, it, it's a great feeling. The Innsbruck course, it's a course that over the years I've started to really be able to exceed at and it's a course that fits my riding style and I really feel like it's a course that I'm able to push my limits at. Yes! It's time, my friends. So you're just as excited as I am because it's slope style day, kicking off the 2022 Crankworks World Tour. And uh, you know what? This is the guy that everybody's talking about right here, Emil Johansson. We talked about it earlier, six wins in a row. You gotta be wondering where his head's at. Sitting up top, waiting to drop in for your first run. I both love it and I hate it. It's something that I found very challenging. If I could choose, I would way rather go in the time machine and just fast forward until it's my turn to drop in. Because it's very hard to be up top, trying to be focused on your run. You see other people throw down. It's a mentally tough situation to be in. We're about ready to drop MJ here. Crazy to think this kid's still just 22 years of age out of Sweden. Here we go. Bill Johansson on course. Nice. Fast plant, 360 to X up. Wow, nice. Nice spin front flip to no hander. Let's see what he's got. Oh, windshield wiper on the hip. <laughs> what? I plan out a crazy run that I almost felt like it was out of reach for a moment, but uh, I stayed patient with it throughout the week and eventually it all pieced together. Back opposite 360. What is happening? Oh, 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 Thanks, dude. Wow. Thief. Uh, so much for a safety run, eh? <laughs> Just pull all, all the stops right away. I was, yeah, trying to, that's always the strategy, trying to push as hard as I can the first run. So in case I need to one-up myself in the second run, I already have a good base. Because if you like leave a lot to the second run, then you get a shit first score, and then you always have to do the second run. Right. So I'd rather like, get a good run out of the bag and then if I need to just have a couple of things I can one up so smart uh, yeah we'll see we'll see if I need to or not uh, I hope not but I'm ready if it comes around so. <laughs> yeah you are Pumped. right on dog <laughs> we either see 
a mill push to his limits or a victory lap. The only one who can determine what that will be is this guy right here. The German sensation, Eric Fedko, the youngster, 24 years of age, sitting on a 95.25 in run number one. He is on course. Worst he can do is second place. I think this one's for the fans, Alan. I think you're right. Yep. Eric Fedko happy with his silver medal here, which means this is insane. Seven. Should we say it? Seven. Should we say it? Seven. Seven. Let's say it at the same time. Seven. <laughs> In a row. That's, I mean, he can't believe he's shaking his head too. He's got a gold medal for every day of the week. <laughs> so relaxed. <laughs> so relaxed. Congratulations, Emil Johansson. The crowd going nuts. Yeah, it, it's incredible. I think you know we're looking at one of the one of the most historical streaks in action sports history. Really, you know, I look back at different different streaks over the years, and names like Dave Mira and Ryan Nyquist come to mind. So, you know, he's definitely putting in the work, and, and it's, it's paying off. You know, nobody can stop him. Pride of Eric going second, seven times straight, dominating. Slope stop competition for three, four years. Emil Johansson. Yeah, this the season we're off to a good start. Uh, first contest in the books, feeling good on my bike. Okay. I was getting ready and training for the next events. I was out on my bike and I had a crash. Oh! But at, at the time of, of the crash, I, I was very optimistic. I just saw it, I discolored my finger. I tried to pull it back in. I didn't really want to go back in. And uh, it started swelling a lot. I was very optimistic. I was like, hopefully it's just like, I don't know, a bruise. The x-ray came back and it indicated on what I didn't really want to believe or hear at the time. And that was that the bone to my ring finger were broken. The knuckle, dropped and in order to get my hand back to normal function I needed to do surgery there were no other way around it I reached out to some people I know in Germany and I figured it would be a faster process if I fly down there so what are we doing Kobe from surgery surgery and then the healing process started no doctors were giving me any false hopes you know uh, they were like saying well, this is the process you need six weeks you need rehab and like all this and that and on this day <laughs> we're like exactly four weeks out of training for Red Bull Joyride I very fast came to realization with that it was gonna be a very difficult month the healing process were a bit more rapid than people initially told me. I took my cast off after 24 hours to start icing my hand. Since the bone was fused, there were not really any bigger risk of me moving my hand. So we're like 72 hours past surgery and I'm getting there. It's exciting, but it's gonna take some time. For now, this cast will do it. Whatever I could try, basically, to make my hand heal, I would. Uh, if it would give me a 0.1% advantage in the healing process, I would do it. Yeah, it were a tough process <laughs> trying to get ready for Jarad, to say the least. If I didn't give it a shot, it would kill me. With that in mind, I was like, just trying to figure out a way how to do it because it was a challenge a big challenge try to not only <laughs> make the hand heal but like also just feel ready for the event once it comes around and it's not any event it's the biggest event of the year i wanted to be there really badly
even though I was very optimistic with the whole scenario, yeah, there were a lot of doubt, a lot of doubt. And I wanted to make sure that the last week before I fly out, I at least do what I can in order to perform. The Athlete Performance Center is, is the place for it. They helped me out throughout the week. I met physiotherapists and just had help to try to move just, if so, an inch closer to being on the bike. What you doing? <laughs> usual. At least usual for now. Cooling down the hand, trying to get rid of the swelling. Uh, it's Wednesday today and I'm flying to Canada in two days. Even though my hand is feeling better, it's fully not cooperating. During my stay at APC, I went and did an x-ray on my hand. And the x-rays came back and it indicated what everyone had said, basically, but what I didn't want to believe. And that was that the bone wasn't fully healed. I had hope of like it being some sort of miracle, you know, the x-ray come back and they say, yeah, it's fully healed, you're good to go, do, do your thing, but that wasn't the case. You still see here the fractures going in here yep. um, and out there. And you, yeah. you can't expect the total healing after three weeks. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Uh, that's impossible from the metabolic view of the, of the yeah. bone. Yeah? Um, I heard there's a question about competing uh, quite soon. Yeah. When? Next week. Well, from the, you know, there's a high, it's a high impact sport. Yeah. You know, if you land and have all the pressure here. It's a high risk for dislocation. It's just something you should know. I know it's always how much is the risk and how, how important it is to yeah. compete again. Um, after four weeks, uh, the risk of a dislocation is still there. Yeah. The decision is definitely up to you. Um, it almost made the decision even more complicated after seeing the x-ray because it was like, well, I know for a fact that yesterday when I did this x-ray, my hand isn't fully healed. And in five days, I'm trying to ride on my hand. What's the risk of that? Hmm. It's not much to do, but to make the best out of it and hope that my hand is feeling better by Tuesday, which is still four or five days away. So it should be fine. Let's face it, if my hand were to re-break, it's not a good scenario. Looking at what it would take to get another surgery, heal from that surgery, rehab, and do all that stuff again, and this time maybe do it at a more reasonable pace. Instead of just missing on one event, I would miss out on three. Half of the season is just gone. Arriving in Canada, I expect the worst and hope for the best was my thoughts going into that week. I didn't want to put any dumb expectations on myself. You know what? Ease off a bit. Take it easy. Like, don't get so wrapped up in what you want to do here because it actually might not happen at all. <laughs> Initially, all, already going into the week, I had my goal set on it. If I just touch my bike on the Tuesday and roll around the parking lot, do a couple of bunny hops, I'm stoked. That's a good start. What are you gonna do? First bunny bar in four and a half weeks. Good luck. See how it goes. That's not a half. Yeah. Uh, this Hey.
That's but it's, it's gonna be painful. But I can do some stuff without like. Sweet. I was afraid I would land and then just like. <laughs> Then I'm going to river jumps, I think. Skate park. This is the same size. <laughs> same I bet. On the Tuesday, I went to the river jumps, some local trails in Whistler, and warmed up there because that was the first time I hit lips in more than four weeks. Yeah, definitely. I, I was surprised. That was a good start. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ewan. Is that good? Felt pretty good, yeah. First couple one hand, one foot bar <laughs> spins in like. So today. I think I'm at like four and a half weeks since injury and tomorrow it's four weeks in surgery so yeah now I'm hopeful even though it hurts like a bitch sometimes uh, I don't know I can grip I wouldn't want to punch anyone but I don't plan on that anyway so, uh, it should be fine, should be fine. Sweet. I'm happy <laughs> nice very quickly I came to realization with like I'm already here I'm riding I'm not feeling as off as I would have thought I would be so I was just you know what we're just going up course because I felt as whatever time I'm getting on a bike let it better be on the course to be there and to ride on the Tuesday made me very happy. Yeah, then straight back down the hill, ice the hand again, back out for afternoon practice after icing it, and then had afternoon practice, went straight down, iced it again. So I was on a crazy icing schedule that, that week for sure. I was afraid that like the first time I cased a jump or come up short on the jump that I would like Fuck the hand up. <laughs> so I was like, made me very hesitant. As soon as I cased the jump pretty bad and I, my hand was still there and functioning, I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm already here. Every single minute I could get on course was definitely to my benefit, uh, just to feel comfortable. And yeah, hopefully, I can get some stuff in today because otherwise I'm in a scenario where I'm basically gonna guinea every single trick in my run for the first time in a month <laughs> which is not really what I'm looking to do at least I would have been stoked to just check that I like still feel like it I know to speak correctly and like the rotations and stuff uh, before dropping into a contest round, trying to link everything together. Uh, but we will see, we will see. Uh, one, one thing at a time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sternen Pommel Ja, es nur bin ich mit du tot hinter Pommel Ja, 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 ja Schnell ist ne Pommel, lege zu in ne Bild und du pia Pommel Ja, ja, das ist länger tut Lege Beats, weil du blüht mit ne Nade nu Du korrekt, als ich fett, wenn du fragst hüt Du sei da, du willst, wem er du nu, ja Ja, bleib G, weil ich zwar da Du bist in, um du vor mir sind und grad da Fuck, fett, Jungs, grab er dir so Satan Je mir weed, la wound, was er grad er war It was such a crazy lead up to that event, it was almost hard to have a feeling for it. And when the contest started, it felt like just like normal. Like I didn't really, I didn't think about the hand, I didn't, didn't bother me that much. I just tried to go into it as any other contest, really. Yeah, it, it was really cool to be back. Get the practice they need so they can put their dream runs down here Welcome Slopestyle Mountain Bike fans, today is our big day, the granddaddy of them all, the one that started this whole amazing sport of Slopestyle Mountain Biking, I'm talking about Red Bull Joyride, we got the best riders on the planet. about ready to drop our first rider. Each rider gets two runs on this Red Bull Joyride course. So, Fed comes in a really good spot, but he also has this guy behind him. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, yeah, did we forget about this guy? Okay, let's talk about this guy. His name is Emil Johansson, and this is his rap sheet right here. Seven wins in a row. He has not lost since he started winning. He is ready to drop into this biggest venue the sport offers. The Swedish trick runner, Emil Johansson! Emil Johansson on course, do not blink. There's that half cap bar spin in. Straight into it. Shrunk to downside whip. Here we go, people, it's on. Big oppo three, double tail it. So notice he's spinning multiple directions. Right to pedal so far in every combo. Oh. Coming into the sphere. Big steezy knack knack out. I love seeing him squeeze that style out of that knack knack. Here we go into the cannon. Oh! Double downside whip three. Oh, big cranked. Invert five. Ooh, did you see that? Taking a little rest here before the final feature. Emil Johansson on a perfect run so far. Bar oh, on the triple truck hop down. Way. How did he get three bar spins off on that? Ridiculous. He's done it again, man. Just the level of difficulty on that run. It's a 94.6. Emil Johansson, number one. And Really emotional event for me. A month ago, uh, I broke my hand. Uh, exactly a month ago. So that I'm back here and uh, been able to perform uh, uh, feels really good. Ridiculous. There was one point there where I saw him rest his hand, and I'm thinking, "Wow, man! I mean, I broke my hand twice as long ago. You know, the same type of bone, and I'm just getting back on the bike." Right there and then, after first run, I was getting prepared for my second run. And I was ready if, if someone were to beat my run, but one rider after another did their runs and all of a sudden I was the only one left up top and I was still in first. <laughs> it was uh, kind of like a pinch me moment, you know? Increasing the streak to eight. And Bill Johansson, ridiculous, doing it again. Slider just loving it, letting it all come out right now. Eight in a row with Slider. There it is. It is official. The 
Hansen makes it eight wins in a row. His second Red Bull Joyride win. <laughs> oh my God, he finally gets to breathe. So much work going into not only having the tricks dialed, but rehabbing an injury, coming back in freakish timing. Yeah, Emil's keeping the Triple Crown alive by winning this one. He just, about six days ago, he wasn't sure if he could ride. It came to my surprise there, fully. Like, I was, I wasn't meant to be there, in a way, I felt like. It was more of like, an out breath. I was like, <sighs> done, like, in a way, because it was, had been so tense leading up to it. After that flight back to Europe, my hands swelled up really bad. And it was like so achy. It was the first time it's been like really achy. I remember riding and like the cobblestones were shaking and like it would irritate my hand a lot. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't ideal. <laughs> like the interesting thing with district ride, it felt in the streets, on cobblestone, then you don't really know what to expect, like it could be anything. And to have 80,000 people in a town when you're riding through it, it's quite surreal. It is a little twiddling down here and now what do you see? You're turning into a skeleton. Yes. I was not planning to do anything at the best trick, but I was riding the jump and I did some three whips. All of a sudden, like, I just thought about this trick that I've wanted to do for such a long time that I just never, like, really had a good jump for. I think I told Lucas, like, can you film it? And I can just see how it looks, if it, like, looks reasonable. And by the time I get back to him and he shows me the clip, he tells me it's possible. I was like, I know, like, because just by that, like, one hit, I, like, all of a sudden got convinced that it was like, going to be possible. And that's when I managed to pull it. Landing new tricks is always an exciting moment, but to do it there in front of all these people, yeah, I remember that one. Good job, guys! Thanks. <laughs> So we've got a couple hours of practice and then contest in the afternoon. Sweet. <laughs> I'm fired up. I mean, if you're not getting goosebumps right now, Matt, you're not even human. And here he is, Emil Johansson, currently ranked number one, clearly, in the FMB World Rankings. Not used to seeing third place. place by his name. 360 Tango Hand up. Just a straight back flip, that's yesterday again where he struggled to get, oh my word though, opposite double, downside 360, 360 top, oh, but that was opposite too. Okay, the control is no problem. No Here we go, Emilio Hudson, fire.
final rider here in the second round before we get into the third. 360 double downside whip on a cannon. There's a 360 windshield wiper. Oh! Mega trick. 71-3-4, so it'll put him and then back had... in command. The 90s, He's in the Hansen. 90s. And there's a familiar position, number one and above the 90 mark. Congrats. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised actually. Uh, it was not an easy one, this one. Like, so little amount of practice, and my hand was bugging me at the beginning of the week. It was swelling up, and I've uh, kind of fooled death mid run. And uh, <laughs> it's always a lot of talented riders at all these events, so to take the win is never guaranteed, ever. Felt pretty good coming back home after I don't even know how many weeks on the road. To having somewhat a routine again, it was the first time I was back home and healthy in two months. So I was just stoked to start riding at the local jumps and at all the different riding spots we have and get back into the form I like to be in because I felt like at Joyride and at District Ride and the other stuff I'd just been catching up. So. To get home felt pretty good and just get back on it. Friends, they don't care. Australia is cool. It was it was rad to be there for the first time. Uh, a lot of excitement uh, with a new course that is fully new. Like everything is different. It was exciting to start riding the course and see how it would work and figure out a run. When you have a new course, there's new opportunities and new doors to open. Obviously a very different climate there, uh, very humid. I've never been sweating that much. <laughs> Actually during a week of training it was it was gross. But I think we're working man, look at that. Oh yeah, you, problem though, you got you, you don't need to work to look like that. 
Yeah, dude, I went to the restroom. I was ah. fucking dripping. Oh. I yeah. leave my T-shirt, everything, yeah. everything. I get in, I'm like, dude, I was like, my arm was like straight up. Like you feel the yeah, the tear the dropping. Like, got it? Got it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the week of training went pretty well. I was linking up a run that I was satisfied with piece by piece. I was trying to figure out some stuff on the course and I was slowly getting more and more ready to do the contest day by day. Is the course clear? Okie dokie. had a crash and uh, I took an impact on this part of my body, like this area, so it's been sore. Uh, I also hit my head, uh, got cleared from, got cleared to ride. Not much to do, I think. You just gotta brush it off and kind of get back to it. What a day it is. Here we are hanging out. Third stop of the 2022 Crankworks World Tour. A new location. Emil Johansson. Flawless for eight events in a row. That can only mean one thing. That means with this being the third stop of the 2022 season, if he wins today, he will secure the triple crown of slope style. Fired up, baby. To be able to come to places like this and there's so many fans, it's, uh, it's a wild, wild experience, it's so sick. I uh, you pumped for it? Fuck yeah. My run went very well until I get to the last jump, basically. And here we go, dropping into the Crankworks Can Slope Style Course, Emil Johansson. So he's going all the way up and over, bar to bar truck to Can Can, steezy as can be. Oh! Truck to double downside tail, perfectly in and out. Oh man, so steezy on that knack knack. Double Whoa. downside whip. 450 tuck, no hander, okay? He's keeping his momentum. He's gonna look good coming into Whoa. this last set. Emil Johansson has the speed. Opposite three, so oh, no! Oh, that's a big hit to the head right there. Not only did I slip a pedal, I actually slipped both pedals. And I kind of wrapped around the bike, put my leg on top of the front wheel, which basically made a whole bike just flip over and send me over the bars. Then I can't remember anything more than just brief stuff from waking up. I was just, after that, really fucking confused, to be honest. I had to pull your fucking brake lever out of your shoe. Your brake lever was stuck your shoe to the point that I had to pull the tongue of the shoe to get your bike untangled from you. So, fuck. Insane that you're sitting here. So I'm getting word right now. Unfortunately, Emil has pulled out of the competition. He's not going to take his second run. <laughs> Rightfully so, man. I don't think I'd want to see him take a second run. I think he's making the right call. Kudos, kudos to Emil for making that decision and whoever that was there to help him. He'll be back, and like you said, the Triple Crown is still within his grasp. It wasn't until after the contest that I, the emotions and feelings came down on me, and I was absolutely devastated. Like, the way it happened was just, I would have been fine with not taking home the Triple Crown at that event if that was the way it went about. But the way this happened and how dramatic it was, and how also confused I was at the time. It was, it was heartbreaking. 
and also just the amount of headache I had. I was, it was scary. Then I just remember like going off course, going back home to the hotel room. I basically locked myself in for the rest of that trip in my hotel room. I didn't really go out. Tried to stay off the screens as much as possible. I was just basically shutting off as much as I could. After any head injury, just making sure, you know, I took the right steps and day by day I did the concussion baseline test to see how I was improving and just overall symptoms, how I was feeling and slowly I started to feel better. I went back into riding after I think about 12 days I was back on the bike. So I took it quite, quite easy, like I was just making sure that I took enough rest to make sure that once I went back to the bike, I could stay on it because concussions are serious and I wanted to make sure I didn't take any unnecessary risk with that one. It's uh, something like so big, like so much more fragile than the bone, you know, <laughs> like it's, it was just going to take the time it needed. In the back of my mind at that time, I knew that I only had like about from when I started riding until I was gonna fly out, I had like about two weeks. Uh, mountain bikers, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've heard you guys shout uh, to each other on TV, so don't fake it now. So, <laughs> okay, so ta, ta, ta. iki, iki, e, 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 okay, so ta iki, e, ta iki, e, massive, okay, so, okay, so and, and with that, and essentially that last part means that we're gonna be bound together. As a whanau, I know you guys are competitors, but from what I see on the TV, you love each other as well. We and that's and, and that's the main main important thing. When you know when when people fall and fail, I've, I've seen you guys pick each other up. <laughs> White shoes on the course walk day. Wouldn't wear them if I didn't want to get them dirty. Look at you got the steezers. You got. <laughs> Arriving in New Zealand. Uh, I knew that I didn't have the right preparation that I would have liked to for that event in the bag. Like the majority of the whole week just rained. Stuff. It's kind of too early in the year for the New Zealand summer. So it's like the weather isn't necessarily stable and if it's raining it doesn't dry up fast enough. And with the event actually being scheduled for Sunday and if there's a bad weather day, there's no contest. So. It's just a really tricky situation uh, for event organizers, for us, and it's hard to get prep, like, not what you want when you've been traveling from the other side of the world here to show up and just sit around. I were left with shit preparation going into the event, close to no preparation on course by the time Saturday rolls around. And on the Saturday, weather cleared up, so... What's happening? Yeah. Hey, what's happening? What the uh, we're cutting up. Cutting up. Uh, practice pretty much, yeah? Pretty much. This is going to be hopefully the first day of practice, yeah. It's been lots of rain, lots of wind. Now it's not lots of wind or lots of rain. In regards to our feet, should get this in slow mo. To try to come up with a contest run that is competitive and something you're excited and stoked about doing as well to take home both the triple crown and the overall title if i win the contest which i needed to do in order to take home those two titles to try to get ready for an event like that in only one day feels so hard like it felt impossible i just tried to make the most out of it 
Pakamoa Kia Tina! Tina! difficult trying to prepare for today however I think the session we had yesterday was pretty good so it's the same for everyone everyone just gotta kind of you just kind of gotta roll the dice and uh, put your riding level at a sustainable place social media dude let's get this party started Welcome Slope Style fans, what a season this 2022 edition has been. Yeah, now we are wrapping things up the same way we did last season. Rotorua, New Zealand here, the Max is Slope Style in memory of Magaza. Thinking back just a short month ago. Sitting up top and you seeing riders drop in, it's like, feels very hectic in a way. It's also so calm up there, it's so quiet. Max fucking did a great run. Yeah, dropping him for that run. It was all or nothing basically. It's you against your run. This man right here doesn't spend too much time out of the 90 when it comes to the score range. Bill Johansson already in the history books for the sport of slope style. We've seen him come back from so much adversity. Let's see if we can see that again here. Bill Johansson on course. Oh! Little Nolly 360. Somehow able to keep that front end down. Come on, Emil, you got this, buddy. Whoa! 360 bar spin to double down whip. Yes. Downside tail is off the wall. That's not something we've seen yet. Suicide up. Three out. No Sanford, so so far he's tricked every single feature. Big toboggan, nose dive, 360. Bar to bar back off of three. Here we go. Oh, oh what? 360 triple whip. Oh, come no on. He way. comes to surprise us. The man who spent the last month rehabbing, where did he find the time to pull a trick that we haven't seen him do in competition? Come on! Score to be 89.5, Tim Bringer. What's it gonna be for Mill? 92.75! Right back where he belongs. Mill, the first thing I wanna ask you about is that hammer on the final jump. We haven't seen that from you. Uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you got a nice little laugh reaction out of the crowd right there. Well, that was quite the show there. The score to beat 92.75. Way to go, Emil Johansson. Now kick back and let's see what Fedco <laughs> has to offer. Thank you. There we go, Eric Fedco. Something to note here, if he finishes second, he wraps up the Slopestyle World Championship overall based on points. Waiting for the final call, basically, on how well your score is gonna hold up. Feels like a lifetime sometimes. Pressure. All right, so run two score coming in for Eric Fedko. He needs to beat 89.5 to lock up the hole. He's not going to do it. 85.5, just pointing out how clean the run for Max Fredrickson was. There we go, the celebration up top. Emil Johansson has secured the triple crown for the second year in a row. He's also grabbed his ninth. 
career Crankworx Slopestyle victory. He also secures the Crankworx FNBA Slopestyle World Championship title for 2022. <laughs> <laughs> like it didn't sink in, it took a while for it to sink in, it just felt like I remember getting down in the finish crawl and getting the triple crown and like I was there, I held it, but it just still felt so... I know no wins are easy, but this one had to be especially difficult. How much of this last month was physical? How much was mental? And how good does it feel to pull this off? Uh, I wish it felt real at the moment. Uh, it kind of feels like a dream. Uh, it's been such a difficult past month, so to be here and in the position I'm in, it, it, it's just too far from the reality I thought it was going to be. In. It's it's funny. As a kid, I thought it would be like you would win the event and it would be like full on party and you would live on that high for such a long time. But for me right now, like I'm so in love with the process and I'm so in love with just bettering myself and advancing as a writer and as a human being that it's always on to the next. I feel like I'm just getting started.